a sharp Mexican. I want somebody. <laughs> How do I do this? Oh, well, hey, hey, hey there, everybody. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi, thanks for being here. Oh, this thing tightens. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Um, so I've been listening to everybody's stories, and it's really nice because everybody's got like really great stories about dating, and you know, my stories are not so much about dating as much as like how much I believe my dating life has been fucked up by boy bands from the early '90s and late 2000s. <laughs> um, no, I'm serious. You guys are laughing about this, but like, In Sync, Backstreet Boys, 98 Degrees, New Kids on the Block. Uh, new edition, you know, these guys have fucked up my life, like nobody's <laughs> business. Like no guy I've ever dated has ever fucked with my head more than these dudes. And it's so funny because I think about it and it's like pop music, it seems really, I know I'm this high fidelity, right? The pop music seems really innocent enough and in it's catchiness and whatnot, but you know what I'm realizing in retrospect about boy bands is that they set the bar way too high. Like if you guys like listen to any, come on guys, you guys all know that you guys are in the closet about the boy band loving. All right, you guys know the songs, right? Clap your hands if you have like been part of it. You've been part of it. Yes, yes, just come out of the closet, it's fine. Yes, baby. Oh, it's so good. Even in my heart. Yeah, yeah, it's like my karaoke go to. It's so good. Keep playing it because I love it. It makes me feel good. Listen to this crap. Andrew Bailey, that's my friend over there who's like heckling me, I love it. So in the eighth grade, there was a really, really amazing album that came out by Backstreet Boys that wasn't that album. It was the album after that where they were slightly a little bit more grown up, uh, Millennium. And I remember like making my dad, we were taking a road trip to the desert for some photo shoot he did. Does any, I don't know what that desert is called. Do you guys know that like, it's been in like every like photo shoot, it's like cracked. Like the floor is all cracked. Does that make sense? Do you guys know what Death I'm talking about? Thank you. My dad was doing a photo shoot at Death Valley and he's taking me with him. And I made him listen to the Millennium album the entire <laughs> way there, like twice <laughs> on a loop. And I was just so obsessed with this album because this album in particular talked about the soulmate. You know, and I was raised Catholic, so this idea that there's this one person, this one soulmate, really like went with my like Catholic indoctrination. It really worked for me. And it was a pivotal concept because it's that one person who's gonna treat you right, because everybody before this person has treated you like complete and utter shit. Right? <laughs> right? But that's okay because Nick Carter, who's singing the verse to you, is not gonna do that for you. You know, he's not gonna play games with your heart, you know, and he's gonna go anywhere for you. Most guys I date won't even go to the bodega for me. Okay. <laughs> But you know, mind you, I'm 14 in a Catholic school. Nobody is fucking dating me. I'm like the least person to like relate to these lyrics, but I'm drinking the Kool-Aid like water is like running out tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you for the clap, whoever did that. That was good. I know you relate. Uh, <laughs> so there I am running my, oh my God, my three best friends in grade school. We're, we're in, like running the unofficial uh, in sync fan club of St. Elizabeth Parish Hungry School, you know, and I'm the president, obviously, and it's just the three of us. Um, so we're, we, we get together at these meetings and we're talking about love, devotion, complete and utter codependency. Did I want it that way? Absolutely. I did want it that way. And, you know, so I managed to grade a, date a grand total of maybe, I don't know, three dudes in high school. And they're really sweet dudes, really awesome, and no bad breakups. It was just like, okay, we're going to different grades now, and let's, let's like, end this. Um, but, you know, I'm, 
I'm also more of like a, a serial monogamist. I'm not like a dater person. I don't go around and date people. I date people for like six months to like five years, you know? So, and that was normal for me in high school. I was like, yeah, this is my boyfriend and we've been together for, you know, five years. <laughs> um, you know, and I thought that's, I dated long term because I thought that's what dudes wanted. I mean, it was what Nick Lachey wanted. He absolutely wanted that. I mean, I do cherish you. They're getting married in the video, and you know, she's super young, and she's marrying all four of them, which no one seems to have a problem with, which I think is really weird in that video. So when you're dating people, you kind of develop a type, right? Um, and this is where the boy bands sort of come into play for me. You know, there are five basic types in every successful boy band. Like, who's seen together? Everyone's seen together? Is it just me? Yeah, yeah, you see it. So, you know, there's the five. There's the bad boy, number one, right? Your shy, bashful type, really, like, sincere, sensitive. That's number two. Number three is the reassuring older brother type. You know, Kevin, Chris Kirkpatrick, the really old dudes. <laughs> and then uh, there's the little guy, the dewy-eyed youngsters. I'm talking about your howies, you know. And then your heartthrobs, your Justin Timberlakes, your Nick Lachey's, your, uh, not Nick Lachey's, but they all blend together. Nick Carter's and uh, Nick Lachey. Oh my God, they were both named Nick. I just realized that right now. <laughs> so confusing. <laughs> so it turns out I am into none of these types. I'm really into the people who are emotionally unavailable for me. Um, so let's take stock. Like, Backstreet Boys, Brian, obviously. And he has, he's unavailable because he has a heart murmur. I mean, of all the organs to have like an affliction with, he's in a boy band and it's his heart. He, can't, he just can't take it. And you know, Jeff from 98 Degrees, he got the tattoo on his arm that says 98 Degrees. So that, I mean, that's a plus because it shows, you know, he's committed. You know, that shit's for life. He's really into it. But funny story, I actually ran into Jeff at a Kinko's. <laughs> like, in 2008, I was working as an intern, and I was copying scripts for a theater company. And I'm like, is that? That is totally Jeff from 98 Degrees. And he still had the tattoo, but he also had his girlfriend with him. So unavailable, obviously. <laughs> And then, you know, in sync, this was my big one. Lance. I mean, gay. So obviously unavailable. Like, but I didn't know that he was gay until he came out, which was really sad, but makes a lot of sense in retrospect, seeing who I've dated in the past. Um, so I have a pattern. I have a type. And, you know, cut to my big move to New York. It's like danger, excitement, opportunity. So what's the first thing that I do when I get here? I get in a five-year relationship with someone that lives 3,000 miles away. Like I threw my best whoring years away in college <laughs> because I was like, I'm in New York. I'm gonna get a boyfriend. That's what's gonna happen. So it was a great relationship. He treated me really nicely, like, you know, almost princess-like, you know, in the 98 degrees kind of way. But obviously I had to kill that because, you know, it felt good, so I had to kill it. Um, and I hadn't really other noticed other boys in New York because when you're a boy band fan, you kind of adopt this philosophy that you are going to keep with this relationship no matter what happens. Until it, like, is going down in flames in front of your eyes, you are going to stick by your man. That's just kind of how it is with the, with the boy band reality. And then I was like, you know, I'm gonna start dating guys like that are completely the opposite of anyone I've ever dated. I'm just gonna get out there and just, you know, lay it out. And then I get out and it's to my shock and surprise, I am like totally blown away by the fact that guys don't think like Justin Timberlake. <laughs> which is the really, really awful part for me because they're not suffering from heartache. They're not sitting up at 6 a.m. writing these love songs about how I know that you're with this guy, but he doesn't see you like I see you. He doesn't talk to you. He doesn't answer your phone calls. I'm going to do that for you. No, like these guys are the fucking worst people I've ever met on the planet. <laughs> so, you know, it was a little bit of a shock to my system that people didn't act like boy bands. It was weird. But what I realized out of that whole thing is that I'm really addicted to boys with like bad boys with emotional issues that can't commit. So, you know, there's that upside of it. I was drunk and young and having these really awful one night stands. And then I had my heart broken a lot. And 
you know, I was really grateful for that at the time, but then that scene gets like really tired real fast. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some me time. I'm gonna stop dating. I'm just gonna focus on my art, whatever bullshit that is, right? So I'm focusing on my art and, you know, it's great, but then I'm getting hella lonely for like, somebody, that special someone, you know, the someone that Boys to Men always talks about when they're like, hello, that special someone who's gonna be there, baby. Like, I can't even, I can't even do the voice anymore. So this past January, I went to go visit my, my friend Jane, and Jane and I used to live together, and when Jane and I lived together, it was a hot mess every night. Not because we are going out getting drunk, no, our idea of a hot mess was like, do you want to sit on the couch, drink rose hip tea, and watch 90s boy band videos all night long? Yep, exactly. So, you know, we'd sit down, and it's like, it starts, it starts really, like, easy, you know? It starts with, like, Britney Spears. And then it slowly, like, digresses into, like, 90 degrees, new kids on the block, and then, like, boys to men, all for one. And then it goes into a really bad loophole where it's, like, the boy bands that nobody's ever heard of, like, B.B. Mac and Youngstown and O-Town Liquid Dreams. That music video gave me feelings that I didn't even know that I had deep inside me. So awful. Ashley Angel, exactly. God, what the fuck kind of name is that? Ashley Angel? Like, so stupid. So, you know, we're sitting there and we're doing our usual routine and uh, we're 100% sober. I can't even lie and say that we're drunk. Like, we're singing, we're dancing. And then all of a sudden, Jane turns to me and she goes, hey, did you watch the American Video Music Awards this past year? And I was like, uh, no. I don't have a TV, so I, I didn't watch it. Why? She's like, um... Do you mind if we watch a One Direction video right now? And I was like, One Direction? What the fuck are you talking about? And mind you, like, the only thing I, I had managed to block out One Direction for some reason, the only time I saw them was like, I don't know, when they first premiered in the US and they did that that music video, What Makes You Beautiful? And I was like, when I saw it, I was like, wow, these 12 year olds are really into this J. Crew commercial that they're filming on the beach. <laughs> and, um, the first line of that song, I have a real problem with. The first line is, you're insecure. And I was just like, what the fuck are these 12 year olds listening to these days? You're just getting somebody that's telling you you're insecure right out the bat. There's no like, you know, hit it. They're not even like softening the blow for you or like trying to like massage you into the fact that you're insecure. And I was like, you know, my, my, my guys, the guys of my years, my generation, they were men. Okay, they danced with their shirts off and it was synchronized. Like, I don't understand what is happening with these little boys jumping on the beach being like, yay, you're insecure. I'm gonna understand you. Like, I, did, I, did, I, I wrote them off immediately. So then I, I, I relay this story to my friend Jane and she's like, oh no girl, you haven't watched them like recently? And I was like, uh, well, I don't know, I don't care. She's like, let me just, just wait. So she pulls up this video. Oh my fucking God. These guys grew up, okay? And they are wearing like awful, awful clothing that I'm really appreciative of. They have bad tattoos that have like conflicting meanings all over their arms. Like they grew up and I'm hooked, right? So the camera pans slightly towards the left. And that's when I see him, Zayn Malik. <laughs> like, so have you guys seen Cry Baby before? The movie Cry Baby? Cough if you've seen Cry Baby. You've seen it, right? Johnny Depp, irresistible. Whoever fucking styled Zayn's hair that day did the exact same, like, you know, this thing, and I was falling in fucking love. Like, this guy's 21. It's never ever gonna happen. Also, like, he's a famous person. Like, it's never gonna happen. But I found myself like, oh, 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 as I'm watching the video. And I'm like, I am falling in love with everything you are saying right now. And I've, I've since, uh, like, that, um, like analyze the lyrics of that song. So the song is called Night Changes. And I'm pretty sure it's a song about a girl who's like unready, not, she's not ready to lose her virginity. And he's assuring her that no matter what happens,
everything will stay the same, even when the night changes. That's the whole thing, right? And I'm like watching it, and then we just, I was like, can we watch it again? And she's like, yeah, let's watch it again. And then the next morning, I wake up, and I'm like, I'm gonna go on Tumblr and see if there's any like blogs dedicated to his hair. There are, there are blogs dedicated just to the one thing. So uh, I go on there, and I'm like, obsessed, guys, I'm obsessed. I download the song on my phone, and I'm like private sessioning my Spotify just to listen to it over and over again. And then I watch the music video, and that like cinches it for me. It cinches it for me because the video is shot from uh, like your point of view, and the guys are taking you out on these fucking dates. They're taking you to the carnival. They're fucking ice skating with you. They're playing fucking Monopoly and they spill wine on you. It's like an amazing music video. And the whole time I'm like rewatching it going, I'm on this date right now. I'm on this date right now. Totally delusional. So I spend the rest of my vacation doing that. I come back to New York and obviously I'm still single. Like it's <laughs> nothing changed between then. So I'm thinking maybe all this shit is correlated. All the stuff from me being 14 to me being 27 like the same thing with a boy band so maybe I should give up on that so I've decided to adopt a new teeny bopper type of idol whose taste in men is a lot worse than mine and I'm so thankful for that and she also dated someone in one direction so in the words of Taylor Swift in the words of Taylor Swift shake it off and when you finally realize that we belong together, I'm gonna laugh my ass off because we are never, ever, ever getting back together. <laughs> Thanks.